Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Teenagers in Space, where we've, uh, we've landed on Mars. Well, technically it was a bit of a jingles landing, but we're on the surface, that's the important thing. Of course, all that means is that our problems are just starting. Good news, got a full tank of oxygen. Bad news, it's not going to last forever and we're on Mars. I can hear a beeping noise though. Is there something around here we should be doing? You'd think that given that this is an emergency escape pod, it would have emergency supplies. Because, you know, the escape pod would seem like the logical place to put them. And I'm pretty sure that one of the last things Claire said, and we'll talk more about Claire in a moment, uh, before ordering abandoned ship, was to tell Ryan and Sarah to prep the supplies in the ASCs in the escape pods. And yet there are no supplies in this escape pod. Right. Oh yeah, Claire's dead. Well, I'm assuming she's dead. I mean, we haven't seen the body or anything, but she was stuck on board an exploding spaceship. With no way of getting to the escape pods. So we're kind of assuming that she's dead. Although, as one of you pointed out in the previous video, she didn't need to die if she just worked the problem instead of giving up. Did you make it? Sarah? Ryan? It's extremely unlikely that a suit radio, which probably only has a range of one or two kilometres, is going to be able to make contact with Sarah or Ryan. I mean, you can understand cats need to try, of course, but they could have landed 500 kilometres away for all we know. Also, I'm only assuming that I'm actually heading in the right direction. I mean, the game started me off facing this way, so fingers crossed. Sarah? Ryan? This is Kathy. Can you hear me? It's also possible that Sarah and Ryan can hear me, but I can't hear them. Uh, radio can be tricky like that. Reception and transmission can be influenced by all kinds of local environmental conditions, even sunspot activity. So it's it's worth it to keep trying. Oh, hello. Something's happening. What's going on here? Looks like I am heading the right way. Sarah, Ryan, please come in. That's one of the arms. Looks like we are heading in the right direction. But there's no way I'm going to make it there before my oxygen supply runs out. So you know what that means, don't you boys and girls? Unlike Claire in the previous video, we are going to have to start working the problem. So what I mean by working the problem, and this will be a concept that will be familiar to anybody who's ever watched The Martian or read the book that it was based on by the novelist Andy Weir. And this is something that NASA actually teaches astronauts. If you have an issue, some kind of... Hang on a minute, this isn't what we were looking at a minute ago. I need oxygen, Ava. And there you go. Kat may not realise it, but she's already started working the problem. Her issue is she's stuck on Mars. I mean, that's a big problem. How do you fix that? Well, you break it down into more easily manageable problems. The, hang on, what the hell's that? Some kind of station? Okay, well. Cat's immediate problem, before worrying about the fact that she's stuck on Mars, is she needs oxygen. So fix that problem first, and then you can worry about the other problems. Looks like some kind of airlock. And not a second too soon. There you go, first problem the solved. station replenish my oxygen. What? Yes, the station replenished your oxygen, Cat. How is there still oxygen here? She's talking as if she knows what this place is. And she's... But if... I'm assuming this place, whatever it is, was built by the Outward Colonists, who've been here a couple of years. Better write that down. And if the Outward Colonists built this outpost or whatever it is, why are you surprised that it's in working order? Why are you surprised that this place works? Of course it works. It was built by the best and brightest that Earth had to offer. One of the reasons why you're up here. 
produced at Herschel. She's talking as if she doesn't expect this place to have been constructed by the outward colonists from the moon. As if this is some kind of abandoned mining station built by the WSA. But the WSA never sent a mission to Mars. Hello, what's this? 50,000 tons daily. Yeah, there's no way a WSA station was built here to send 50,000 tons of ore back to Earth every day. This is clearly an outward colony facility. So why is she surprised that it's working? Doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not just me, is it? I mean, what she said just didn't make any sense. It's like we're going outside again. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, there's no way a shoestring organisation like the WSA built this and then abandoned it. I mean, this has clearly been built by the outward colonists that we're here to find. So obviously everything's in working order. Oh, new objectives, get to the Ark in hopes of finding the others. What was this facility? Um, well, it's a quarry, obviously. Just look at it. Wait, am I supposed... I, it's not letting me move. So what am I supposed to be... What was that? Ah, oh, right. Here Excavators, we go. Excavators, cranes. This looks like a quarry. Well, it's completely deserted. duh. And heavily beaten by dust storms for some time already. We need to make it to the other side to get to the Ark. Oh, Alright. It's better if we find some transportation. Okay, how do I get out of here? Oh, aha, uh -huh. is that a rover? A rover. That is a rover. Let's hope it's functional. How do I get up there? New problem, how do I get to the rover? Yeah, we're working the problem. Hello, what was that? Elevator? That should get us up to the rover. Let's yes. make our way down there so we can take that elevator. Right, so we have to make our way down there in order to get the elevator up to the rover. We are working the problem. Something that Claire completely failed to do in the previous episode. Which is kind of disappointing, given that next to Sarah, she was the one on the mission. As well as the mission commander and the one on the mission with the most astronaut experience. She was stuck on the other side of a bulkhead door that wouldn't open. That meant that she couldn't make it to the escape pods. And instead of working the problem, she just stood there waiting to die. Well, what other choice did she have, Jingles? She was stuck on the other side of a bulkhead door, unable to reach the escape pods. She's not going to break out an engineering kit and fix the door in the few seconds that were remaining. No, you're absolutely right. But as somebody else pointed out in the comments of the previous video, there was an airlock right next to her, and she was in a working spacesuit. So she could have abandoned ship, she just couldn't get into the escape pods. What good's that going to do, Jingles, now she's floating in orbit, with a limited oxygen supply and no way of getting down to the surface? True, that is an issue. But there was another ship in orbit, the Ark, and it was only, at most, a couple of kilometres away, and she had a suit with EVA thrusters on it. She could have gotten to the Ark. And it's an ark. <laughs> it's designed to support human life. We'd already restored power. There were options. Plenty of options that she could have exercised that didn't involve just standing hopelessly on the wrong side of a jammed bulkhead door on an exploding spaceship. She just gave up. She didn't work the problem. That was kind of disappointing. Cat here, however, is working the problem. First problem, you're stuck on Mars. Alright, that's a fairly big problem. What's your most immediate problem? Well, I'm about to run out of oxygen, alright? Solve that problem. Problem solved. Found an outpost with an oxygen regulator. Next problem, you're still stuck on Mars. What are you going to do about that? Well, it's not like you're going to build a spaceship yourself. So, maybe the outward colonists who have developed way more advanced technology than we currently have back on Earth can do something about that. So how are you going to fix that problem? Well, let's make it to Ark Habitats, where the outward colonists live. We can see it. How are we going to get to it? We've got to get across this quarry. Okay, so first problem. Get to the other side of the quarry. Into the rover. 
which will do a much, much better job of sustaining life than the suit that you're wearing. How are we going to do that? Well, first problem, get down to the quarry floor. You see, it's all about breaking everything down. It doesn't matter how big the problem seems, how unachievable the objective seems. You break it down into the most immediate problem. You deal with that problem, and then you deal with the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until you get there. Plus, talking about this uh, process allows me to do some clever and sneaky edits. <laughs> um, in this whole climbing down the cliff face thing, which is really tricky until you get used to how these axes work. Because this is the first time that you've actually had to use them. Well, technically that's not true. There was a section earlier on in the game which I trimmed out in order to, you know, keep the story rolling and keep these episodes down to less than an hour in length, um, where young Kathy was being taught by her father Isaac how to use these things. But this is the first time you've actually had to use them where your life depends on getting it right. And I died a lot of times. <laughs> which will come as a surprise to absolutely nobody, of course. Um, but it is kind of tricky. I'll tell you what else doesn't help here. Ayla, your ASE unit, keeps getting in your line of sight. Which can be tricky when you need to get these axes placed in exactly the right spot in order to avoid dying. She keeps obscuring your view. Which is kind of awkward. Right, there's a band of hard rock there. There we go. That I can't dig the axes into. This does get a lot easier once you start to recognise the specific types of rock that you can actually dig these axes into. Um, and it makes for an interesting type of puzzle. I mean, they're awkward as hell at first, until you get used to how it works. But it does make for an interesting type of puzzle that they didn't have in the previous game. Which, let's face it, they probably wouldn't have been able to put into the previous game because the moon is basically mostly flat. Uh, there aren't mountains, and there certainly aren't quarries on the moon. I mean, there aren't quarries on Mars either. This place is obviously, you know, fictional. But there are valleys and canyons on Mars. The generator doesn't seem operational. There must be a way to power it. In fact, I think Mars has some of the deepest canyons, if not the deepest canyons in the solar system. I know it's got the biggest mountains in the solar system. Olympus Mons, for example. Biggest volcano in the solar system that we know of. But it's difficult to see how there might be a planet in the solar system with anything bigger. The top of that thing actually reaches orbit. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of these puzzles. So we had these... Um, holographic memories, if you like, in the previous game, but I don't remember having to go through this kind of song and dance in order to unlock and watch them. Ugh. Yeah. I had one of these earlier in the game, in order to unlock the, uh, the hologram on board the Ark, and it took a long time for me to figure it out and get it right. You've basically got three axes of movement, and you have to manipulate each uh, to unlock the thing. But moving in one axis can affect more than one of the things. There we go. Got it? Yes. Cool. Here we go. Story time. What am I supposed to be looking at, Ayla? Let me go, please. I, I made a mistake. Please, Mr. Johansson, please calm down. I need to go back to work. Come, come, come in here was a mistake. Please, please, I, I just want to... Isaac, you're confused from the cryo. Try to calm down. I don't need to calm down. I need to go back for my daughter. I know you're smarter than this. I know that deep down you understand that what you are saying is foolish. Please, William. Please, let me go back to work. How do you imagine that would go, Isaac? How do you think you would be welcomed? With fanfare or police escort? Going back won't bring you any closer to ever seeing your daughter again. I know you know this. You and I, if we ever return to Earth, 
will be tried like war criminals. They will treat us like traitors to the human race, not as its saviors. The only way you get to see Kathy is from behind bars. Look, the quarry has been producing at a velocity of around 20 million metric tons in the last three years. We built this, Isaac, thanks to your designs, your estimates, your insight. And now you're here with Arc Vita, no less. Just imagine how much output will grow. It will become everything we dreamed of. I'm sorry for making that very cruel decision back then. And if we can ever bring a select few from Earth, we will make sure your daughter is part of that group. But before that, we need to focus on the here and now. We need you here, Isaac. Can I count on you, old friend? Rest first. We'll get your quarters and habitats cleared out so you can clear your head, okay? Okay. All right, so while Cat's having a bit of a tender moment with a hologram, that raises a couple of questions. Isaac is here. He's, or was, certainly when this holographic uh, recollection was recorded, Isaac made it to the colony. And he's here working with and, well, being manipulated by MacArthur, along with all the rest of the colonists. And yet, in... In the hologram that we watched on board the Ark in orbit, when they were all being brought out of suspended animation and being treated to MacArthur's rousing five-year plan if we all work together comrades speech, they were talking about how they were going to manage without Ark Vita, which was the Ark that Isaac had stolen. So they, they clearly weren't expecting to be able to count on having the resources available from that Ark, and yet it clearly made it to Mars because Isaac's here. Also, next question. This quarry is clearly abandoned and has seen better days. No one's been working here in some time. So Artwood has an emergency network at its facilities. We'll need to hook that up to power the elevator. All right, next problem. Get some power to the elevator, okay. Um, yeah, so why is this quarry abandoned? Why is it no longer producing 50,000 tonnes of ore daily? And that can only be because of one of two reasons. Either they don't need any more ore, they've mined all of the ore that they're ever going to need, or something has gone horribly and badly wrong, and my money's probably on the latter. What's that? A message. Oh, I get it. Um, they're... they're they're covering their backs here, explaining why there are these holographic recordings lying around the place, able to be accessed by ASC units. Write this down for later. Yeah, fair enough. Also, MacArthur. I um. That's oh, hang on. Platform. Maybe I can grapple onto it. Yeah, I don't want to go so far as to say that MacArthur is the brains behind the whole outward project, but we've definitely seen his type before. There are plenty of Hitlers and Mussolinis in history. And MacArthur definitely falls into that category. He's never going to be what you would describe as the smartest guy in the room. But he doesn't need to be the smartest guy in the room because he can manipulate the smartest guys in the room. If he can't talk people into doing what he wants, if he can't convince them that it's in their own best interests or the interests of the rest of humanity, then he just forces them into doing it. And if he can't force you into doing something, he has you killed. 
We saw all of this on the moon in the previous game. And we're seeing more of it here in these uh, holographic memories. Be very, very suspicious of loud and charismatic people with a vision. I mean, MacArthur, he's no scientist, he's no engineer. He doesn't know how to build arcs to transport hundreds of colonists to Mars. He doesn't know how to build a functioning Martian colony. Assuming that it is still a functioning Martian colony. But he found himself surrounded by hundreds of very, very smart people who did know how to do all of those things. And he's got a silver tongue. And now it's time for yet another hologram. Story time again. I still can't believe it, Isaac. In my wildest dreams, I didn't dare to see numbers like this. You keep living up to your name with every project you get your hands on. Our dream is coming to life, my friend. There you are. Rosa, join us. We're just celebrating. Isaac's ore crusher is performing well above expectations. Admissions are up again, William. 62% this last month. We need to expand the medical wing, and we need more staff to take care of them. We've talked about this. It's only a temporary increase. I don't think it is. People are being worked too hard and burning out too fast. More and more are showing symptoms of anxiety and PTSD. And with our outlook for the future milestones, those numbers are only going to go up. Isaac's housing development has just started. We can't spare anyone else. Let me rehabilitate them, William. Give me more space and more staff so I can... We can't afford to take people off the ground crews to rest and even more to support them. That will only prolong our struggles. These are your people, William. They follow you, look up to you. The answer is no. I'll see both of you at the weekly debrief tonight. Rosa, meet me in the medical wing. I might be able to help you out. Yeah, MacArthur doesn't give two shits about all the people that he's manipulating. He's in pursuit of his vision and he's prepared to sacrifice anybody and anything in order to achieve it. The sad thing is, he probably believes he's doing the right thing. And any sacrifice is justified in pursuit of achieving his goal. I mean, I'm not suggesting MacArthur's a good person, he clearly isn't. But sometimes bad people do good things. And you'd be appalled at how often good people do very, very bad things. If they just believe they're doing them for good enough reasons. I mean, Isaac and Rosa, perfect examples. Rosa was never a supporter of the Outward Project, and yet here she is, coerced into coming along against her own will and put into a situation by MacArthur where he knows he can just rely on her sense of right and wrong and duty to do what it is that he needs her to do, provide medical support for the colony, because whether or not she wanted to be here, and she didn't, MacArthur forced her to come along, she's here now, and she's a doctor, and the colonists need doctors, so... She's doing what MacArthur wants, and he didn't even have to ask nicely. Same situation with Isaac, although I'm still not sure how Isaac is actually here. But um, he's working with MacArthur again, whether he wants to or not, because he's here, and well, what else is he going to do? What are they going on about? Prefabs. Outward colonist prefabs, way in advance. Seriously, calm down, they're just prefabs. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's the technology... <laughs> okay, we get it, right? These are the best and brightest that Earth had to offer. They're capable of um, coming up with technology far in advance of anything that the poor sods left on Earth can do, but it's just a prefabricated panel. I mean, let's not get too carried away here. <laughs> Calm down, game. We get it. Right, anyway, we made it to the stream tower. Although, I don't know why I couldn't have just walked up that collapsed crane that the game made me look at earlier and I had to go through that whole rigmarole climbing through the tunnels, but whatever, we're here. So let's restore power to the elevator. That's the RP for the stream tower, right, Ayla? Okay, let's power it up. Right, so another power-up mini-puzzle. Just have a quick look around, see if there's anything collectible. Hello. Okay, I'm going to need a laser this open. Done. So we've got two transmitters and 
two receivers. And there's a thing over there. I'm not sure what the thing is, but let's get this done. Right, that's... Well, it hasn't actually done anything. All right, let's see what the other one does. What is this, anyway? MPT power reduction field. Power input reduced on contact. Supports multiple beams. Okay. Resistor. Yeah, it's a power it resistor. Like I presume you put it in the beam and it reduces the power output. I don't know why you can't just... You know, surely there should be a dial on the transmitter to reduce whatever. Because reasons. Let's see what this one does. So there's another receiver over there. And that's opened the door. That one still doesn't look right, though. Yeah, this isn't working. So that one's red. It's clearly not... Huh. So, you see the sort of, that one is blue in three sectors. This airlock isn't working yet, okay, um, and is working. That one shows blue in two sectors. Let's check this out. Oh, I get it. The transmitters show you how much power they're going to deliver. And the receivers show you how much power they need. So... Right, got it. The first transmitter is supplying way too much power. It's supplying four sectors of power. The second one is only going to supply three. But the one that I need only needs two. So, if this is providing three, and I need to reduce it by one... There we go. That's now one too much. And that one provides four. And the receiver over there only needs three. Yeah. Y you can see how this is going to work. So we overcharge that one as well. And now both are receiving one point of power too much. So I position this where the beams cross. It affects both. And there you go. Okay. Done. That looks good. That is great. Yeah, right. So, um, presumably now I have to go and throw a switch to actually turn the elevator on or transmit power to the elevator. Yep, here we go. Oh, I have to align the... Oh, yeah. This happened in the previous game as well. I mean, this is much of a mini-game. It's not difficult. You just point it at the receiver and... Would it press F, maybe? F seems to activate other stuff. It's not giving me a prompt to press F. Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. Bingo! We now have power to the elevator. I still don't understand how this is better than just having a power cable, but... Um, <laughs> this should power the yeah. elevator. Let's go down there. That's how this game works, alright? It's fine. Right, elevator powered up, get to the elevator, go up, get into the rover. And the rover has its own oxygen and power supply, assuming it works. Assuming it hasn't been abandoned there because it doesn't work, then we'll be good. Let's check out the view. Kind of reminds me of taking the elevator up to the uh, top of the rocket earlier on in the game. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's not a good sound. Oh, that's very bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on, wait, no. That's the kind of wall I can climb. So, can I... Are you going to open the gate? Can I... Come on, game, give me a chance. Here it is. And... There we are. We're going to live. <laughs> there goes the elevator car. Right, fine. So, we're going to have to climb up the old-fashioned way. More climbing. Uh, it's another puzzle. It's fine. Not particularly interesting to watch, so we're going to skip to the conclusion. 
Although I do have to say, my earlier comments in previous videos, where I was getting the impression that there was a lot of watching and listening in this game and not an awful lot of doing, uh, I'm very pleased to say that's no longer true. There is an awful lot of doing, uh, and not all of it's particularly easy. I mean, it's not particularly difficult either. The, um, and god damn it, Ayla getting in the way of the view again. Bugger off, I need to see where I'm going. But yes, I think the difficulty level is pitched exactly right for, uh, well, somebody as crap as me. <laughs> this, is, this is fine. I, I like this. I can handle these kind of puzzles. If they get any more complicated than this, there's going to be a lot of edits in the future. Anyway, let's uh, skip to the conclusion. We need to get to that rover. All right, new plan. Turns out I can't actually climb all the way to the top. There is going to be one final puzzle. And it's a jumping puzzle. <laughs> My favourite kind of puzzle. All right. It can't be that bad, can it? Let's see. Am I supposed to go up? Or is there something down there? Up the top or something? Oh, I think... Yeah, I think we're going up. Alright, so I probably need to avoid getting hit by those things. Right, I, I can see how this is going to go. Yeah. And again. And again. Onto the middle. Now what? Is there a door over there? One of these is going to open up? Oh, right, yeah. That'll do. Now where are we going? It's like we're going up again. Okay. Oh, right, yeah. Like I said, not particularly difficult puzzles. Although I did still manage to get caught out by one of these rotating arms and knocked back down to the bottom. But uh, you don't need to see that. <laughs> Let's just pretend I made it to the top of my first game. There we go. Made it. Perfect. Nothing to worry about. Now, where's that damn rover? I'm seeing rover bits. There was a wheel there. Has anybody seen? Oh, there we go. Awesome. Hey, that is the rover work. Okay, good. Well, that one doesn't look like it works. That one looks like it's seen better days. This one, however, that's a very nice looking rover. I think I'll have it. How do I get in? Airlock at the back? Yep, makes sense. What do you mean, please work? You just asked Ayla if it worked, and Ayla said yes. There we go. We have power. Come on, cat. It's not an internal combustion engine, is it? <laughs> you don't need to pump the gas, right? An internal combustion engine wouldn't work in Martian atmosphere. There wouldn't be enough oxygen, there wouldn't be enough air pressure. This is clearly battery powered. You just... it either works or it doesn't. Kathy to Sarah and Ryan. If you're getting any of this. Found a rover and I'm waiting out the storm to head to the Ark. I hope to see you there. Alright, the rover works. Awesome. We're not gonna die. At least we're probably not going to die today. And I think that's a good place to leave it. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. I'm very pleased that there's more to actually do in this game. And uh, not quite as much to just watch and listen to. Ayla? Are you okay out there? Okay. Yeah, Ayla, Ayla's fine. Ayla's a robot. It has been a rough day for Cat, though. Oh, here it comes. You know, I'm pleased they put this in. It does make her more human. Because she has had a rough day. Her sister's died. She's lost, alone, stranded on Mars. And she is just 19 years old. So, while Kat has a bit of a moment, while she can afford to, that's it for this episode of Teenagers in Space. I hope you've enjoyed it, and as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time. <laughs>